win it! Wow! Oh man, it being just posterized, Russell Westbrook! You love the Philadelphia Eagles! Let me get a hell yeah! What is up, everybody? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to not party on broad. Today it is therapy on broad. Uh, today we're going to react to the 17 to 9 Philadelphia Eagles loss to the Seattle Seahawks. Joining me today we have Jack Connell. Follow him and his post position podcast um, on Twitter at Jack Connell TPL. What's up, Jack? Nothing much. You know, it was a sad day yesterday, but got to move on. Sixer season. Fully upon us now. It's always been, but now it's everybody needs six year season. So let's recap an Eagles season. Let's see what they got going forward for the next couple months. Let's do it. Man, I'm hurting. I got to admit, I worked all day today. I just got home. It's nearly six o'clock. And I, for my first thing is, I haven't felt this shitty since the Kawhi lettered, you know, quadruple doink. Is that, what about you, man? I'd say her. I mean, and my thing is, I, there's nothing you can do. I mean, everybody and anybody was hurt. Your backup quarterback was hurt. Like, there's nothing. It's. And I'm proud of how they got so far. But I mean, when you're missing your two top running backs, when you're missing literally every person you would need to succeed, and the players you have that would help you succeed are also hurt playing. Yeah. It just wasn't meant to be. I couldn't agree more. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, we got to start out with what a horrendous start. To the Seahawks game, man, you had like a um, a missed handoff, and then like everything went wrong, and then boom, Carson Wentz gets knocked out of the game. Uh, had to be one of the worst starts of any game I've ever seen, and we, we got to backtrack a little bit because this season really is like two different seasons, in my opinion. You had a season that was massive underachieving, and then you had a season and the next half, especially the last like four weeks of Carson playing out, playing his heart out, and then you have hope. You know, we, the Eagles didn't have hopes, and you know, <laughs> since, I don't know, like maybe week eight? It's been pretty much doom and gloom all season long. The Eagles are riding in high, and then boom, Carson Wentz gets hurt, and man, I mean, it, this I, I brought up the quadruple uh, doink <laughs> uh, from Quiet Leonard. I have to go back before that when Carson Wentz got hurt in 2017. I have been down and out all day. What was your just reaction to the Carson Wentz injury? It sucked. I mean, it's it really sucked. I mean, it wasn't it was a dirty play. Basically, just how they reacted. It's just unless you're a Seahawk named Russell Wilson or Marshawn Lynch, it's just you annoy me. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's and the natural media just going after him, claiming that. It's, He's injury pro now. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I mean, everybody would have gotten hurt on that play. I mean, that's nothing to say regardless. It's a concussion. A concussion is different from a leg, different from a back, all that. So you think it's, it was a dirty hit? Hunt. Yeah, I mean, he was down. He was giving himself up and Cloudy hit him from behind and hit him in the head. I mean, I played. I mean, there's that you only do that kind of hit if you're trying to take somebody out of the game. And that's yeah. not right. I agree. Uh, I, he, you definitely see him lower his helmet, you know, aim right at Carson Wentz's head. What does what, what the NFL got to do, man? What, do they got to, like, implement the college system rules? Like, do, you got to be able to review that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be the college college football targeting. If it's rule correct, you get ejected. It's simple as that. Um, and then we go to what everyone's talking about it today, the, the what if. Is, has kind of been the theme of the day. Would the Eagles have defeated the Seahawks with a healthy Carson Wentz? What do you think? Yes. I mean, it's just even that play, they would have scored. I mean, McCown, I mean, it's not his fault. He's a 40 year old who pulled his hamstring two plays before. If that was an athletic Carson Wentz, if that lane he had, he would have taken that eight yards. Obviously, hindsight's 20 20. Who knows? It may not come down that there's obviously many different possibilities, but his athleticism would have helped them a lot throughout this game. I mean, the passing. McCown did a great job passing, so I really don't think there was much of a drop off there. I mean, he kind of showed he had a deep ball as well, so I think it was mainly like his athleticism on the run, all that stuff would have helped out immensely. I fully agree. I think the Eagles would have would have won this. Really, the the Seahawks game for me, you know, boils down to really a couple th things. Um, it, it boils down to obviously third down conversions. The the Seahawks were eight of fifteen uh, on third down yesterday, and just countless 
third and longs that they converted. Man, I, I've been Craven LeBlanc's biggest supporter. That missed tackle he had in that first half, man. You had the Carson Wentz injury, and then you had like just a tier below was Craven LeBlanc. Man, I'm not, I love Craven, and that killed me. Um, I mean, you also had Brandon Graham going down, and Miles Sanders went down in that first half. Like, like they, everyone, it was such a microcosm of this entire season. It really was. And um, I think they would have, the, oh, the other thing was just simply playmaking, man. Um, you know, Metcalf, Russell Wilson, uh, it just came down to playmaking. And when you watch the game, there were absolutely pockets. Yeah, the, the offensive line gave up seven sacks. It wasn't the best performance, but there were absolutely pockets there that, you know, Carson Wentz could have exploited. And there were times in the game where I thought um, there was a play to be made. It's just a four-year-old quarterback, man. And I got to love him, man. I love the heart he showed. He had that, what, like 12-yard run? That was one of the, like, mm -hmm. I, I remember just like cheering, just watching a 40-year-old quarterback outrun the Seattle D Seahawks defense for a first down. That was very memorable. Um, but man, I mean, injuries, missed opportunities, the drop by Miles Sanders in that fourth quarter. He catches that nine times out of 10, man. Um, it's just like you said, I think it's just not meant to be. Um, you kind of, let's, let's talk about a little bit. Let's, you know, this is therapy on broad. I have a question for you, man. Um, which, right. which injury hurt most? Joel Embiid with gastroenteritis during the Toronto Raptors series or the Carson Wentz injury versus the Seattle Seahaw Seahawks? MVP. Because <laughs> you could have won the game without him. The Eagles showed they could have won without Carson Wentz. Well, it's a lot, it was a lot different ball game. Was six, I mean, while they could have won without MVP, but it would change everything drastically. I mean, I love Carson Wentz. He's good. He's playing great. But the way the Eagles were playing against Seattle, I think they still could have won without Wentz if they did a couple things differently. It's kind of the same, right? It's like the same hypothetical situation is that's what I've been like kind of killing myself over in my head all day long while at work is that that what if, you know, if Carson Wentz had played, if Joel Embiid had played, they're, de they're definitely locks to win, I thought. Just didn't happen, man. Just, just didn't happen. Um, let's talk about how you would define the Philadelphia Eagles season. Was it a success or was it a disappointment? What, what do you think, man? I think it started as a disappointment. And as the season got later, they picked their stuff up as much as they could because they got a lot of stuff, a lot of injuries thrown in their face. They picked it up. They went through it. They struggled and they fought tooth and nail to get to where they were and they fought even in the last seconds. So I really, it started off as a disappointment. But I mean, like they said, kind of think Jason Kelsey kind of yelled at everybody in the offensive team and kind of rallied everyone together. Tough love. And I feel like it kind of changed from that point onward. And I really think. It's, I think the end of the season would be considered a success with what they had. Okay. Um, I ran a poll. Um, it was 63% found this season a success. What is my opinion? I'm going against the popular opinion, man. It was an absolute failure. Um, this season started as contenders, Super Bowl contenders. It just, everything fell apart, whether it's injuries or missed opportunities. Carson Wentz didn't play that well in the first half of the season. Um, everything just, you know, fell apart like a Jenga tower, just one block came out and then just everything else just kind of unloaded. Um, then they showed some sign of heart. You know, did they win the division? Yes. At the end of the day, you got to win the Super Bowl, man. And it it just didn't happen. Um, let's talk about which player on the Philadelphia Eagles was the biggest disappointment this season. Uh, I got a few of them on my list. I have Avante Maddox. I have Derek Barnett. I have Alshon Jeffrey. I have Nelson Aguilar. Um, I've got to start with Nelson Aguilar, personally. Um, were, were my expectations way too high? Absolutely. Um, but I thought this was a guy that was going to step right in. I mean, we walked into this regular season thinking the Eagles had the top offense in the league. And boy, was I wrong. Um, but I initially thought Nelson Aguilar in that slot man was due for a huge year. What about you? I agree. I mean, I felt like he was ready to take that next step up gradually. I mean, I thought those, the days of him being bad were behind him in 2016 and 2017. Yeah, I thought it was over and done with, but I, he regressed. I mean, I don't, I don't know what happened. I was really looking forward to a big season for him, and he regressed, and it really hurt a lot. I think Alshon, 
he's just getting older. He's getting a lot of injuries. He played decent. Barnett, I felt like he's a good, solid off the edge force. I really didn't have much issues with him on the field. And who was the other one you said? I had a I mean, I, there's a lot more, man. There's a lot more, too. To it's, a it's a sophomore slump, I think, for Maddox. Uh, Sidney Jones, uh, we saw really nothing from Sidney Jones. Would you call Jay Jaw a disappointment? Again, he's a rookie, so I mean, you really can't judge a lot of players off their rookie year, to be honest with you. I mean, no, not many players are a star right off the bat. Not everybody's going to be DK Metcalf and all these other first rounders this year and second rounders. I think, I still think he's ways of He's very young. I'm not really that worried with him. I think he will improve as he, as he gets older. Uh, in the poll, Nelson Aguilar was the biggest disappointment, according to Eagles fans, at 54%. Alshon Jeffrey was second at 32%. Uh, let's move on. What is the biggest, um, what is the greatest position of need for the Philadelphia Eagles this offseason? Um, me personally, I boiled it down to wide receiver, secondary, defensive line, and offensive line. We're going to get into the Eagles' uh, upcoming free agents in a little bit. Um, what, what's your thoughts, man? Offensive, I mean, offensive line, I don't think much of an issue. I mean, everybody's come back. Jason Peters basically said last night he's not retiring. He will be back next year. Um, he said this is my last NFL game. So I think the whole offensive line will be back. You can get cheap guys. I'm really not worried about the offensive line. They played, I mean, everybody wants to complain. I think they played very well this year. Dillard will be another year older. Wide receiver, I think it would probably be wide receiver in the secondary. I mean, you got guys like Craven, Malcolm Jenkins will get paid, Ronnie McLeod will be back. Hopefully these younger guys will take another step up. Jalen Mills will be back. He'll be healthy. I don't think it'll be that much of a need. Wide receiver, I think, I mean, wide receiver, yeah, I would agree. Because Alshon's getting older, Aguilar's not going to be back, and you only have Ertz, Goddard, like you need receivers. Ward will probably be back, I feel, but I don't know who else. Um, I For me, it's personally, it's wide receiver. Um, however, when we're we're gonna start doing some NFL draft stuff with the Blue Root in a little bit, I'm one that I never draft a guy that high. Um, if he he better if if we're drafting high high in the, or like mid first round, you gotta take an offensive lineman. You gotta take a defensive lineman. But not this year, man. This is the year where they absolutely need a playmaker, and that's wide receiver. This is the year that would you consider trading up for a wide receiver? What do you think? If one falls, I don't know how the I I don't know, I haven't taken a really much, good much of the draft. Yeah, I know the prospect. I'm talking about the order and who, who what teams are where and what that would place in the wide receivers. Trying to have to take a look at that. If a guy with one of the Bama receivers falls, I don't think Judy falls that far. But I mean, if you can get a deal done, I mean, you're drafting 21st. You'd probably want to move up about 10 picks if you wanted to get an elite receiver. I think it's doable. You have what two or three second round picks. Uh, I have to look at that. I'm not sure. I'm. If you need, if you feel you have the guy you want, and you can package a player and a pick, I think you can make it happen. Really, depending on who's available where. Like I said, I really. I mean, I know who the players are. I know Jerry Judy's gonna be incredible. I don't. I mean, I would love Jerry Giano, but that would be a very high asking price. He's gonna be a top five draft pick. So I don't know if that's really feasible for you to get, but I. I would consider drafting up if the right falls and it kind of lines up perfectly. You have to say. I, I saw today that your boy uh, Tua just entered the draft. That's your boy, right? <laughs> that's Harry's guy. <laughs> oh, that's Harry's guy? Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, let's talk about some bright spots. Um, what, what were some of the main positives of this season? Um, me, personally, it's got to be Carson Wentz showing you know some real grit um, in the latter parts of the season. How about Greg Ward, you know, making a name for himself? Um, what about you? Go ahead. The running back core. The running yeah. backs all played great. Jordan Howard, Boston Scott, Miles Sanders all played great. Corey Clement obviously was an injury, all that stuff. The offensive line, I felt, was very good. Brandon Brooks, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, arguably the best at each of their positions in the NFL. Jason Peters, still great. You have Andre Dillard in the, trend, in the pipeline. I'm really excited at the offensive line. Defensive line, they did when they were in the right scheme. They played great. great. Fletcher Cox was downright amazing. Oh, That's like man. absolutely the center of the Seattle Hawks. Names escaping right now, but he was dominating him. Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett. I felt all the good. Josh Sweat showed some promise. 
a lot of these guys look really well. You're going to have Malik Jackson back next year. That's right. I mean, I felt towards the end of the year, everybody was really doing all right for the most part when they could. Secondary, I think, was the only one that we really left. And that, that would just say that purely in the corners. The safeties were fine. The cornerbacks kind of left a little to be desired, but not all of them. You know, can you mention Craven LeBlanc did great. I mean, Ronald Darby was okay. I mean, Jalen Mills was good. I mean, they, they let up some key passes, but it was re- it's really hard to do it with an elusive Russell Wilson kind of making yep. plays by himself. Yeah, hey man. Um, which Philadelphia Eagles coach should be most concerned about their job this week? Uh, I boiled it down to a few. I've got Mike Rowe. I've got Jim Schwartz, and I have Carson Walsh, who is the wide receivers coach. Um, I want to go back for a second because you brought up the running back position for the bright spot. Deuce Staley needs some loving because he had an awesome year. And if there is anyone that maybe possibly deserves, um, you know, a, a promotion, maybe offensive coordinator, <coughs> fire Mike Grow. Um, that's the guy. I'd like to see Deuce Staley get a shot. Um, wh- wh- who's on the hot seat yeah. uh, on the Eagles? Go ahead. I don't know if they get rid of Mike Grubb. I think it would be the right move. Um, I really think, I mean, play call, the game planning, everything, I mean, they obviously, in the last few weeks, I feel like kind of throws a wrench in everything because how much they were able to prepare and go against the odds and these guys that were no kind of developed. But I feel a lot of that was kind of based off of the help they had other positions, kind of taking stress off of those guys. So I would kind of go maybe Carson Walsh. I think I would love to so he'd be the offensive coordinator, but I don't have to get rid of Mike Rowe. All right. Uh, let's talk about the upcoming uh, free agency. The Eagles have a lot of players uh, who are free agents. I'm going to ask you, are you in or are you out? You ready, man? Let's start right. off. Let's start off with Malcolm Jenkins. Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think they're going to play? The yeah. All right, we'll see. Uh, Jordan Howard. No, he's out. He's done. Yeah, I believe he's out as well. Um, unless he comes back on a cheap contract, which is possible. But I don't think that's something Jordan Howard's looking for. Howard played well, but the Eagles need to spend their salary elsewhere. And they have these guys in Boston, uh, Miles Sanders, very cheap. They have shown to be effective. And it's just, it sucks. He, but I don't think he has a home here, Billy. Um, like Greg Ward's one that I want to come back. The other guy, like you said, is Boston Scott. Yeah, I mean, he he absolutely deserves a, some kind of role next season. Uh, how about Nelson Aguilar? <laughs> God, get him out. Uh, let's go to Jason Peters. Back. He's back. Uh, I'm ready to move on from Jason Peters. I think, um, I think Andre Dillard is probably one of the most important pieces this offseason and developing him is a huge storyline. Uh, let's go to Corey Clement. Depends on what he's asking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, if he's asking to come back, if he wants, he wants his money, which I respect, I think he's gone. I would agree. I think he's gone. I'm more, I, I would love to see Corey Clement. He just can't get on the field and I'm just leading. I think, you know, he's going to be out the door pretty soon. Uh, Big V. He's back. Yeah, we're probably very much likely back. Uh, Timmy Jernigan. Back. Back? Okay. Uh, I'm 50-50 on that. I think they could probably invest maybe in a defensive tackle in this draft. Uh, let's go to Nigel Bradham. He's back. He's Everybody likes to hate on him. He was a criminal underrated part of the linebacking core. He's been great when he was healthy. I really think he needs to be back. Uh, was was it Bradham or Grugier Hill who missed that tackle in the second half? Do you remember that? I, I forget who it was. I don't know who it was. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Camus, Grugier, Grugier Hill, who, in or out? And he's been developing solid linebackers. He's a great special teamer. He's been a captain for this team. He's back. I, I definitely think he's back. Jalen Mills. Back. Corner. You need him. Woo. I don't know. I'd love to upgrade there. If he's asking for a lot of money, I don't think he's back. But if he's on a cheap deal, you bring him back. Uh, similarly, Ronald Darby, I'm out. What about you? Yeah, I think he's done. Yes, I'm done. And then Rodney McLeod. Back. 
Drew McLeod's been great for this defense. I fully agree. Uh, so a lot of big mm-hmm. question marks in that secondary, man. Jenkins, McLeod, Mills, Darby. You could be looking at a whole new secondary uh, next season. And that, I, I, my first thought is, man, missing out on Sidney Jones, man, is that, that, that is one of the biggest daggers <laughs> right now. I'm just, oh, that's such a miss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think he's again. He's still very young. I'm really, I'm not worried a lot about these young guys because NFL t- players take a lot, lot longer to develop unless you're stars compared to NBA players who are usually elite right out the gate. And uh, we ha- before we wrap this up, we got to bring up some positives, and that is your 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 little name tag down there. Baby Yoda equals Boston Scott. Uh, there were, it wasn't much smiling today, but the one smile I did get was Boston Scott tweeting uh, himself as Baby Yoda. That was just brilliant, man. That was awesome. I didn't know he made that. Maybe he made himself. I saw that game. He had a chuckle. Love it. Love it. All right. Uh, make sure you check out Jack on Twitter at Jack Connell TPL. Um, check out his post position podcast that deals with the NBA and everything else. Uh, myself, Mr. Crockpot, uh, for Jack, for me, <sighs> go birds, baby. You know, we're, we were, it was a rough game, but we're proud of the team. And we're, we were, we're with you, Carson Wentz. He's got to be just killing himself today. It's just brutal, a brutal, brutal Monday, man. Um, yeah. I should, I guess maybe I should say go Sixers. <laughs> here they come. There it is. Hashtag here they come. There it is. All right, guys. Stay awesome. <laughs> yes.